the tobacco companies knew what they were producing. And so they created a product for long-term use because they wanted long-term clients. And they knew that nicotine was addictive and they knew that cigarettes caused cancer. So if you have a vape pod or a jewel pod, the nicotine in that one pod is equivalent to one pack of Marlboro Reds. And kids are smoking one pod at a time. And so smoking cessation has a multitude of benefits, obviously, but from the addiction standpoint, you still are consuming the addictive substance. You might not have the heat and all the other tar and carcinogens, as many, but you're still getting them in vape. Get ready for your unofficial dental hygiene podcast. These are the tales of two hygienists, one East Coast RDH and one West Coast guy genist. Listen as they tackle the profession of dental hygiene with humor and enthusiasm. Now, please join Michelle Strange and Andrew Johnston as they tell you a tale of two hygienists. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists, number 184. My name is Andrew. And my name is Michelle. Welcome back to another week. Great week. Great week, everybody. Podcast of ours. I just wanted to say I'm still on that high from ADHA. It was so great to finally meet a lot of people and see how much they're learning from our guest. It was, that was great. It still cracks me up that, well, I, I was thinking this week, I totally messed this up in the moment because you weren't there and it was me and like Raphael or someone <laughs> walking by and someone says, I just got to give you a hug. And they hugged me and I'm like, what are you doing? And then I remembered that we like put it out there, like give Andrew a hug. And I totally messed <laughs> it up. And I'm really sorry that I made it all awkward for everybody. You were going to be giving out hugs the entire time. I know, but I was like in my brain, like I'm like, okay, at the booth, <laughs> we're going to be giving hugs, not just in the middle of nowhere, but not that I don't love it. I do love the hugs. I just, it was very, I don't know. I wasn't thinking. So I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. I, I totally botched that, but it sounds like maybe we'll have a better opportunity for me to fix that under one roof. So we'll see if Shuri comes through with her, with her promise. So, oh, well, if you are going to be at Under One Roof, we would love for you to give Andrew a hug. I'll take a hug too, but I just want to watch Andrew be super awkward now. You know, I don't understand. How come I can't hug you, but you will hug complete strangers? We are not huggers, Andrew. We should be though. Like, I feel <laughs> like I... I mean, do you hug Mike all the time when you see him? And Mike is his brother, by the way. Different. And Andrew, Andrew and I are very much at this point, brother, sister, we are family. But how many times have you hugged Mike? Just about every time you see him. But I don't see him very often. I see your face like almost every day. Right. So I feel like we're closer. I feel like I, I look, I just feel like the hugs should happen. Like you have such a depressing life that you need me <laughs> to give you the hugs with what? your swimming with dolphins and little Lola Bear right there being as cute as she is. Like, your life sucks without my hugs. It does. It does. What's your love language? Physical touch. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Well, I think that's how I, that's how I express my love to others is be like, look, I love you. I support you, blah, blah. Because I don't remember to say the words that are nice and life affirming. <laughs> The words of affirmation. I don't. I just don't do that. So, just curious. Mine is acts of service. So, I would rather you, as you did, carry my bag. I'm serving you by hugging you and making you incredibly awkward and uncomfortable. It's fine. Yeah. Well. <laughs> well. Okay. We'll we'll have to. We'll just move on. We have a really good episode though planned for. We do you know, have a good episode. Was, and this was at ADHA. We finally got Edie Gibson on the podcast. Yes. And Edie has been such, I, I've met her. I'm trying to remember. It was definitely in the world of implants, dental implants. Um, I think it was at a ICOI conference, which I think I may have spoken about before. And it's the International Congress of Oral Implantologists, something like that. And then they have an auxiliary section and I've spoken at it a few times. Um, so with Edie... The girl loves the wine 
and she loves education. So, you know, two things after my own heart. Two peas in a pod right there. Yeah. So she's been great. Um, she is just constantly traveling and doing um, amazing things, educating professionals in dentistry. And this particular course um, is on vaping and, you know, smoking, kind of smoking cessation in a way, but really focusing on vaping specifically. And we've been seeing a lot of these Facebook posts, there are these like pictures floating around of like what happens when these things explode, jaws broken, all kinds of stuff. So this is a really important episode. And if you have any questions or comments, definitely seek her out to watch or listen to one of her courses or send her an email. And I apologize. We had multiple interruptions with the PA system on this particular episode. So just go ahead and ignore all that and and just listen to Edie. Hey, Michelle. Yeah. It's time for the interview. Oh, but I had something else to say. We need to let the experts talk now. Fine. I cannot believe we've had this podcast how many years, and we are just now having the great Edie Gibson on. Welcome to Thank our you. little old podcast here. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about you. And if, I mean, if someone's not been lucky enough to be in your lecture, they should seek you out for sure. But tell us about you. Oh, thanks, Michelle and Andrew, for having me. It's a pleasure. I love your podcast. Thank I mean, you. who doesn't love a tale of two hygienists, right? Yeah, I've been in dentistry a long time. I started when I was 15. And I've been in every office, every position within an office, but my favorite has always been a hygienist. I cut my teeth, ha ha ha, in implant <laughs> dentistry <laughs> many, many years ago -bum. Ba -bum, ba -bum, uh -huh, in New York City. And we don't even have wine, so that we can't even toast that to wine. And so, um, this is my fault. This is my fault. I'll take responsibility for that because normally we do have wine. I know, I know. It's good Eating stuff. is my wine connoisseur. We send bottles of wine, names or wine back and forth. It's great. It's great. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was in New York City for a long time, ran a big implant practice. Mm -hmm. And that is how I got into speaking. And I started out strictly speaking on implants and anything and all thing implant dentistry. And through my transition, we ended up, I left New York City and ended up in Colorado where I had a private dental hygiene practice and was with my husband. And he has been sober 12 years. And so I journeyed into the world of addiction, substance abuse, drugs from my experience in my walk with my husband through his addiction and sobriety. And one of the biggest things that we found out when we ran a sober living facility, we had a bunch of young guys come through that every single one of them started smoking when they were really young, which led to smoking marijuana, which led to a continued growth of substance use, uh, mis uh, abuse. And when this whole vaping came out, it was touted, touted to be the safe alternative to smoking. It really was. And Hardcore. It's so not, Their so, marketing was, yeah. yeah. Their marketing was brilliant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Sickening, but brilliant. And it, they have taken, it's just run amok. And all the studies that are coming out and have been coming out are showing that it is worse than smoking. And, and so the vaping companies say that, oh yeah, it's really safe because there's no tar in it like cigarettes. And so if we can go back to what we know about cigarettes, because you learn tobacco cessation in school, but, and why it's bad and, you know, the constriction of blood vessels and things like that. But what makes cigarettes so bad for you? Well, the base, base substance is nicotine. And nicotine is an addictive substance, and it's it's shown and proven to cause cancer. And actually, the National Cancer Institute states it loud and clear, and it's also an insecticide. So if you want to kill a bug, use the nicotine from your cigarette. Spray it on your plant, kill it, but, the, but yet we continue to have it manufactured and sold so we can inhale it into our lungs. It, and Because if I remember correctly, it also had... Like, did I hear like rat poisoning at one point or something that's in that? And then tar, you said. So there, uh, there's a host of chemicals that are in cigarettes that combined and separate cause cancer. So you have toluene, there's um, 
methane, there's which is gas, explosive gas, of course, the tar and the nicotine, and hundreds of other chemicals that are in there. And the sad part is the tobacco companies knew what they were producing. And so they created a product for long-term use because they wanted long-term clients. And they knew that nicotine was addictive and they knew that cigarettes caused cancer. And all their marketing said otherwise until they got called to the mat. I love when the like, the ads from like the 30s or the 40s come back and it's like a, a pregnant woman smoking a cigarette. It's like, hey, if you want to calm yourself. And I'm like, yes, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I cannot believe these things were advertisements. Oh, completely. What about the Marlboro man? I mean, who doesn't love the hot Marlboro man? Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> Cowboy. Cowboy. Hat. And it's cool to smoke mm -hmm. and or Terrytons. My, my folks smoked Terrytons. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Terryton cigarettes. They're white and red package. And their slogan was, I'd rather die than give up my Terrytons. And it was somebody with a black eye. Oh, God. And so there were, and remember the, the Newport lion for Newports, the cool hip um, I do know Newport, lion yeah, with you the know. glasses and then Virginia slim light menthols made for ladies, the long slim oh, sophisticated. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So tobacco companies are brilliant marketers. And when they got called to the mat about all the problems and all the lawsuits came then the Marlboro Company stepped up and started to market and promote to kids, to youth, oh, to, stop, no, to stop the opposite, actually. Oh. So they said because there was such a, a rise in youth um, use that they had put money in, they had to put marketing dollars into marketing efforts to warn kids about the dangers of cigarette smoke. And that's when the labels changed and the age limit rose. So, And so now we have the vaping companies that are saying that they, it was safer to do this because it didn't have the tar and the, the certain chemicals in it. But it really does have chemicals in it. It has a massive amount of chemicals in it. And if you think about the Juul, the pod, so Juul is the name of a company. It's one of the most popular vape companies around. So like we call, if you ask for a tissue, you say, can I have a Kleenex, right? So Juul has now become synonymous with vaping. So if you have a vape pod or a Juul pod, the nicotine in that one pod is equivalent to one pack of Marlboro Reds. And kids are smoking one pod at a time. And so they take deeper, longer breaths, hold it, and then they hide the smoke. So they're starting as young as middle school, fifth grader. And my kiddo came home last year. She rarely rides the bus. She came home last year in seventh grade. And she said, oh, yeah, mom, they've been vaping on the bus for years. Where do they get it? They can go buy it? They can, well, they used to be able to because there wasn't really an age restriction. And, you know, then they have the nicotine-free vape juice, which is which is completely safe, right? And the flavors, and they create the flavors, and and it's marketing to kids. They're marketing to our youth. And the flavors have their own host of problems and issues involved in it because of the chemicals that are in that, too. In the vape, in the nicotine-free, the chemicals were the flavors. They're considered natural flavors, and so or cinnamon. Like, cinnamon is one of the worst because it causes respiratory distress. And they have butter flavor, which is DA or diacetyl. I know. Butter, cinnamon, and vanilla. Those are your top, right? And so the cinnamon causes respiratory distress. The butter, the artificial butter flavor, is the same chemical, DA or diacetyl, which they use in microwave popcorn with fake butter flavor. That chemical causes what they call popcorn lungs, which is a respiratory distress and... Um, destruction and of the monocytes within the lungs. And so and then kids go, come to mixing their own flavors. And when they mix the flavors, the, the respiratory distress increases as they mix the flavors. And what is a respiratory distress? What does that look like? Well, like lung disease. It, it's, you have chronic inflammation going on. They're, the monocytes uh, can't do their job. And it's phlegm in the lungs. So the workers in the 
popcorn factories that make microwave popcorn with uh, butter flavor oh, I can't. because they're breathing in that DA all the time. They are, they have, it's like working in a, a chronic smoking situation being around that. And then you have the actual vape. Well, is that what it, the pen, the what, what is the term for that? Is that vape pen. pen? Yeah. Okay. And that has its own issue. It has its own issue. Yeah. There's two other carriers that I wanted to mention in the e-juice or the vape juice and you can be you can have nicotine free or nicotine and the carriers in it are propylene glycol or pg and vegetable glycerin vg now they're both approved by the fda and safe for consumption but they were never approved for inhalation into the lungs so that in and of itself is a, has a host of other issues because what, what do the lungs do to the body they supply the oxygen. Oxygen. Right? To our blood. To yeah. your blood. Yes. And it is... Oh, man. Yeah. So pe people often say, well, you know, it's different than smoking when I vape because there's really no heat. Because, right, as we know, especially in the healing process, especially with implants, because of the smoke and the inhalation and the heat in the mouth. So they, they have said that it's way safer because there's no heat. But they have the, there's a battery pack. So the problem with the battery pack, have you heard about all the explosions that have been going yeah, on? Yeah, you've seen that lately on Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's all over. It's in journals. It's in medical journals. It's been written up on m multiple different websites. NIH has stuff out there. And it's, it's random. It's not a, tied to any one certain brand, but it's the power of the battery because it looks like a little thumb drive. Right, it can look like a little thumb drive, and there's a little battery in there that heats up the juice that helps cause the, the smoke or the vape plume, as they call it. And when you inhale the juice through the battery, that heats the battery up, and so the battery is exploding inward because of the way they have to place the batteries within the pod. So it ex explodes in, causing major dental destruction. It's caused death because it shattered. The one man had one um, pierce his aorta. And one man had it slide right in the back of his neck. Where are the lawsuits? Like, when did that happen? Is that coming. happening now? It's like, coming. Oh, my God. It's coming. Here's the scary part. Altria, who owns Marlboro, just bought Jewel. <laughs> And they, they touted it by saying, this is great. It'll be great for our youth because Marlboro was so successful in the anti-youth smoking campaign that they're going to do the same thing for vape, for Juul, which is crazy because the market share of Juul is for teenagers and our young, our youth. There is another misnomer. People think, well, because it doesn't smell that you can sit next to me, Michelle, and I can puff away with the biggest old plumes, and you and Andrew, you're not going to get anything. Well, what they found in the first study came out in California years ago, where they, they expelled vape into a container and analyzed the secondhand vape. There were nitrosamine, uh, methane, all these other cancer-causing chemicals in the secondhand smoke, in the secondhand vape. So no, if you're sitting next to somebody who's vaping, you can have exposure as well. And what they're finding out now, even though it doesn't smell, it embeds into material. So if you're vaping in your house and you have curtains, those chemicals are now in your curtains and in your rug and on your furniture and on your dog. <laughs> But it's safe. <laughs> I don't think we give enough credit to how many toxins are in, how exposed we are, and the epigenetics that are coming, the changes uh, that we are seeing in our bodies and our health because of all of these things. Yeah, it's anytime you introduce a man made substance that hasn't been thoroughly vetted and tested for many years, you run the risk of problems and damage and there isn't enough science behind or studies behind vaping to make it truly safe. Now, I will say the FDA is now starting to step in a little bit more, not as aggressively as I would like to see, but they are raising the age of vaping and they're even considering raising the age of smoking up to 21 instead of 18. But the problem I see coming is there's still the nicotine free 
so nicotine free anybody can use and they're still saying oh that's safe and i when i speak on this there's always interesting conversation i had one young lady stand up raise her hand a hygienist raise her hand and she said so Edie, my daughter's buddies they come over they're in 11th grade and they come over and they hang out in our house and they have vape parties without the nicotine of course and so i would say that's okay would you say that's okay <laughs> And um, I said no, and we had a very long discussion about what was in it. And so, and do is the reaction, oh, I get it, or is there pushback because I'd rather her do this versus smoke? Like you know, like it's a good, better, best, which is something Andrew always tells me, and I'm like, no, always the best. And he's like, <laughs> no, that's not how everybody lives their life, Michelle. I would never say it about this though. There's not a good, better, best in this situation. It's all bad. Hulk, I'm glad you have standards. <laughs> But I mean, well, yeah, not everything's evil, though. If it's not, it could be good, too. Anyways, we digress. We'll have, we'll have the wine conversation another yeah, day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there, it, I agree, Andrew. There is no good, better, best when it comes to vaping. There, there isn't. It's, it's, all, it's bad. And the misnomer is out there that it's safe. And it's, it's truly, truly scary. And so yeah, the question you asked if, was how... Was there pushback in the reaction? I get the opposite reaction, Michelle, in my programs. It's the light bulbs and the ahas and oh my gosh. And then it goes into, well, how do I talk to my kids about it? So how do we talk to our patients about it? That's a great question because I guarantee you, if you see eight, I can't guarantee you, yeah, no guarantee, but, right? right? But, but my, yeah. from my experience and communicating with all my friends like you, still wet fingered hygienist, if you see eight patients a day, you're going to average four to five of them are vaping or have tried it or use it regularly or exposed to it secondhand or exposed to it secondhand. My form of communication, I always like to have conversations with my patients and it was easier that way. So I always would sit them up, knee to knee, eye to eye and have a conversation and explain to them. I ask open-ended questions. So tell me about, tell me what you're vaping, Michelle. Tell me about your vaping. And then that will open the conversation and that way I can meet them where they are. So I know where their mindset is wrapped around why they're doing it and find out why they started, where they come from, because, you know, vaping's cool right now. So people want to talk about it. Right. And it's a, it's a badge of, wow, I'm, I'm cool on our use. So if you open the door for that. If the parents aren't in the room, they'll probably open up more. I'm curious because we know to, tobacco cessation is pretty difficult and patients sometimes feel shamed or berated when they're in the chair and but it's that it's a, an important conversation so if you have that patient who it feels like they are su being successful because they switched from tobacco to vaping how what suggestions would could we give our listeners on like having that conversation so they don't feel like they aren't successful. Well, well, let's just call a spade a spade. They aren't successful because they're still smoke. They're still ingesting nicotine. So that's the addictive substance in cigarettes. And so smoking cessation has a multitude of benefits, obviously. But from the addiction standpoint, you still are consuming the addictive substance. You might not have the heat and all the other tar and carcinogens as many, but you're still getting them in vape. And that brings a, a, the similar issues and what they're finding is the oral health of people who are now vaping is starting to look like early onset meth users. What? Yes. Ramp to decay. Ra oh, yes. Ramp to decay, dry mouth, xerostomia, problems associated with it, lichen planus. It's not a safe alternative. And it, when it first came out, everybody said, oh, it's a great step-down method. Mm -hmm, yeah, right. Great mm -hmm. step-down method. If it's used like that, I can see it because you're removing some of the chemicals from your body. But then the step-down method should go however many milligrams of nicotine and then reduce the milligrams of nicotine and eventually get to none. And then you have to deal with the psychological removal of the... Hand to mouth. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what can we say to our patients? Just be honest with them. And again, when I ask, what are you vaping? Tell me about your vaping. Or if they're not, if they're vaping nicotine free, then it would be a simple conversation about, well, that's great. Here's the reality behind 
the flavors. Here's the reality behind the carriers, and this is what it causes. So maybe have a one sheet set out, a laminated one sheet or something for them to take home, or a, a website to send them to. NIH has great information. It depends on who is in your chair. Like for me, hand me a brochure. For my daughter, hand her a computer. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And so that conversation, mm-hmm. and if they're vaping nicotine, then let them know that it's still the addictive drugs still causing the problems. It's still a cancer causing agent in their body. And it's really, it's conversational. And so I think where we as hygienists get a bad rap is we're passionate about what we do, right? We're passionate about helping our clients and we tend to come off as telling you what to do or the expert right yeah and we know yeah. but if we if we meet our patients where they are and get in their world and see where they're at and you know motivational interviewing all of that's great stuff it really really works instead of coming from a judgmental place especially when you deal with addiction it's best to come from a non-judgmental open-ended questions it's not right wrong or, or bad it's where you are where do you want to go how can we get there together Miranda Beeson, uh, she's a hygienist and she does motivational interviewing speeches. And the one thing that she said is that patients are not our information receptacles. Nope. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Isn't it good? That's a good I, one. I, t- I, give, I'm, I try to give her credit every single time, but I, that is one of my favorite things. They are not our information receptacles. We can't just throw information like it's garbage at them and expect for them to be like, oh, all accepting of these things. So it's it's my favorite little analogy now. That's brilliant. It's so true. It's so true, especially when somebody, because nicotine, again, I keep saying it is addictive. So somebody is, has an addiction. And so when you, when you speak to somebody who has a chemical addiction and it's psychological too, they're in a whole different headspace than where you and I are. Right. And so when you throw stuff at it, people learn in different ways, as we all know. Some people want to pick up and touch. Some people learn and and affect change by hearing. And I, I don't know what your hot button would be versus yours, Andrew, what it would be to trigger a, oh, my goodness, I want to change behavior. But what studies have shown is brief interventions by healthcare specialists about addiction, nicotine or whatever, moves people to treatment quicker if it comes from a healthcare professional. And we are healthcare professionals in the dental world, right? You mentioned addiction at the very beginning and that people who are smokers early on, is that like a certain age? Because we know that isn't for every single person, but they're finding that if you are going to be a drug addict or you're starting with smoking at a very early age... Well, what they found, their studies, the most recent one that I read came out of NYU, and Dr. Nora Wolkoff published it from National Institute of Drug Abuse, NIDA. And they did long-term studies following and digressing through current addicts in recovery. And they came back down their lifespan or back down their line and found out where they started. And what they found was the earlier and younger people are exposed to nicotine, the more likely they are to abuse cocaine and to continue for long term. So it's very much a gateway. It is very much a gateway drug. Have it, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And when we have a child sitting in our chair, because we know sometimes they are not really listening, or maybe I should even back it down to uh, a parent, maybe their trigger isn't their health, but their child's health. And having that conversation about the environmental and the secondhand, because maybe they did go from smoking, secondhand smoke, now they're vaping, and they're thinking that's healthier for their family. Yep. That, wow. that, that's a great idea. I love that idea. So find their pain point, yeah. right? Find what's their, their motivation. Oh, yeah. what, where mm-hmm. what are they connected to with their heart? And go in that direction and address it from that end. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And then for our teenagers, I mean, how... Oh, I don't matter around them ever. Thank God. <laughs> Come to my house. <laughs> I, my nephews are turning 11 and 9, and I can already see their behavior change from my little sweet baby boys. And now I'm like, oh, I'm already annoyed by... One said something about that she was hot the other day, and I was like, I will throw you out of this car. You are nine years old. I will... I can't. 
<laughs> oh, just but, get ready. Oh, it's going to be so bad. But we have them in our chair. Are you seeing teenagers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So th that's that brings up an interesting, scary point is the amount of vaping that's going on in our elementary, middle school and high school. Well, when they're having parties, like in the bathroom. Said. Yeah. And so what they do is what they used to do before the teachers knew what a jewel pod looked like. They would charge their jewel cigarette in their laptop of their teacher or on their <laughs> laptop because it looks like a thumb drive. And then they go hang out in the bathroom because, you know, it doesn't smell. And so they go and they have the parties in the bathroom or they even are so bold as to sit in the back of the classroom. And you said like cover. Take an inhale, right? And they just, they cover their hand, they put their mouth down and then they open their sleeve and they blow the vape into their sleeve and then let it go. Remember the movie Shawshank Redemption? When he was emptying the stone out of it, walking mm -hmm. through yeah, that, yeah. like what they do with it and they walk slowly around. Let it out. Slowly let it out. And, and kids are smart so smart and our teachers unfortunately are so overworked and overstressed and underpaid which is a whole nother tale but how can you keep <laughs> up with that i oh know god i know they're so creative it's it's insane the way that the 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 ideas they come up with and the ways they come to skirt around authority and try new things so my kiddo's 13 right she like i said she started seeing vaping on the bus in sixth grade and one of six of her friends in her grade got expelled about two weeks before the end of the school year this year. Wow. And she was really concerned. And so I hear her on the phone talking to her friend and she's telling her friend, yeah, that vaping is really bad. And I hear myself come out of my daughter's mouth. I'm like, oh, she listened. And she started telling her, well, this is what it is. It's nicotine. It's addictive and it's bad for your lungs. And this is my 13 year old preaching to the choir, t teaching her peeps about it. So, if we could start that little movement. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like the, the problem that I have right now is I don't know who's doing it. And that's not a question that I'm just just throwing out regularly. That we, When we have our health history, we have our questions that we have to ask. And you just get into that routine of, oh, what about this change? This medication changes, any heart issues. But there's not a little place there for vaping still on a lot of health histories. Well, you just add it. So if you, you notice tissue changes, right? The three C's, color, contour, consistency, you're going to notice t tissue changes. They're, it's going to show up similar to smokers, right? You, you'll see that. Is there, is there a, a rise and increase in caries, in proximal caries, cervical caries? Is there a rise? Ask them about their dry mouth. It could be sleep, sleep apnea Larger or other pockets things. with no bleeding. Right, maybe. exactly. If you have CAL, improve, in, in, increase CAL. So little things, little changes of things. The, their tongue. Is their tongue more yellow? You can smell, if somebody is a um, vapes on a regular basis, you can smell. I don't know if you've ever gotten in an Uber with a vaping Uber man or woman, <laughs> but there is a distinct odor. It's not cigarette smell, but there is a, a staleness. Pay attention, pay attention, and, and you'll notice it now that you, now you can see, right? Right, your brain, your eyes can't see, but the brain doesn't yeah, know. Mm -hmm. So now that you know, you'll be aware of it. And so by teaching our kids that at a young age, or here's maybe a question like this, Andrew. So tell me about your vaping. And then they'll go, well, I don't vape. Oh, okay, so have you ever tried vaping? So you've opened the door, they either say, oh, well, don't, you know, and you can tell if they twitch or the eye movement, right? And you can always sort of tell if somebody's not quite telling the truth or you've caught them off guard and they go, Right. Uh, their eyes bug out and so you, you can always they look for their parents they look for their parents and like you, you can't you tell them uh, parents yeah. no, right so maybe a question like that tell me about your vaping how often are you exposed to vaping questions like that that aren't confrontational but they open the door for them and most kids think it's cool and so ooh, I, I can talk to my hygienist about this this is cool so with your daughter when did you start that conversation? Like, I, I would assume that since you speak on this a lot, she hears, like, overhears it. But have you had that sit down conversation? Absolutely. Well, again, this goes back to my husband's been sober for 12 years. So she's, it's been part of her life, recovery speak, as you will. So we have long had the conversation about drugs, alcohol, 
And now when the vaping has come on, cigarettes and vaping, so she is hyper aware of it. Even if my husband weren't in the world of recovery, I would still have that conversation, A, because I'm I'm a healthcare professional. So poor kid, she's a good hygiene kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> she has all her proper tools on her sink and she's takes care of her teeth and she teaches other people. But th- I don't think it's ever too early to have the conversation about drugs because nicotine's a drug. And it's starting so soon. So soon. So young. Yeah. So young. They, there's, um, it's interesting you say that. So monitoring the future is a survey that comes out once a year. And they survey oh, 50,000 kids across a host of different um, school districts. And it used to only be high school students. Well, then drugs, alcohol, and cons- use started earlier and earlier. They now go down into eighth grade. And next year, I think they'll probably go down even into start at sixth grade. So middle school and high school in this. And this is a survey they send to the students? Yep, to the students. The children? Yeah, with permission from the parents. And they talk about it. And it explores, it's called Monitoring the Future. And you can Google that, get it online. And there's, if you speak on it, you can download the video and include the video with depends on the year what the fun music is like (laughs) and it goes through uh, you might have seen it in one of my programs but it goes through all of the statistics like cigarette use what they're finding is cigarette use is declining because cannabis is now legal so cannabis marijuana smoking is going up and alcohol consumption has stayed about the same and certain drugs drop and rise in use over the year depending on the year so it's pretty cool and it was eye-opening to see how early people start and they're thinking about 13. Is that it? The About the range? 12. They'll go down to 12. Oh, my goodness. I know. Zach's 12. Turned 13 this oh year. My oh, yeah. My girl's 13. She turned she's 13 and a half going into eighth grade. Very young. Very young. There's just, there's so much access to everything, you know, and social media and, and the ability to ask the Google and... <laughs> And YouTube and Instagram and everything, everything out there is so available to her. Not like we didn't have that growing up. I mean, I know you did because you're so young, but me and my old dog over here, we didn't have that stuff growing up. We just didn't have access. Than you, Andrew. <laughs> well, what are you going to do about it? Well, so we talk addiction a lot with adults, but if they're starting that young, they're going to be fighting that as well. Oh, yeah. And maybe they don't want their parents to know that they're DT and from it. How is there something that we can do to help them to have that conversation, prepare them or well, because I'm thinking like a 13 year old, if I started having this conversation with a 13 or let's say 14 year old and I'm like encouraging them and maybe they're like, OK, don't or I'm going to stop. Sm-, they're going to go through withdrawals, I would imagine. If they're smoke, Yeah, if they're nicotine, if they're vaping nicotine. Absolutely. And so what kind of conversation can I have with them about maybe that what they're going to experience and how to help them get through that? Because I'm still imagining I'm going to try to be their confidant, maybe not say like, I'm going to tell your mom what I'm seeing, but can I help you kind of get through this so that you can feel better, feel better and not suggestions on it. Right. Well, if it's vaping, Mm -hmm. the, like this, a whole can of worms. Oh, okay. I'm not advising anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's just, I'm not advising. Yeah. Not, yeah. Right? I am <laughs> not a doctor. Disclosure. Full disclosure. I'm just humble me. But what I would do, if I, if that presented itself, my approach would be the step down. So instead of going for, from a, a jewel pod that has the nicotine of one pack of Marlboro Reds, maybe go down in nicotine concentration. And wean them, step down, wean down off of that, and then move to vape free, and then remove the psychological hand to mouth. That would be the ideal. On my husband's world, it's called cold turkey. You just quit. Oh wow, <laughs> that's tough though. Yeah, that's that's and so you know. But, have you ever smoked? I mean, I smoked and I, I smoked in college and then I went. Oh, I mean, I good. might have put a cigarette to my lips and I don't know if I actually knew how to inhale. Anything. <laughs> well, I smoked. I, can't, I, I wasn't yeah. I wasn't a heavy was never a heavy smoker. It was always a fun social smoker kind of thing. And it, when I put them down, I was done, you know, never went back to them. So the the nicotine withdrawal is irritable. 
you can be restless, you can be lethargic because nicotine's a stimulant. So you have nicorette gum, you can replace it with nicotine gum, you have patch, all the same stuff. So nicotine withdrawal from vaping is like nicotine withdrawal from cigarettes because nicotine is nicotine. And then I heard you say, so if a 13 year old came in and they're having a problem, would you talk to their parents about it? I don't know. Like, it's that, I don't see kids. So this is not my wheelhouse. I don't even know <laughs> what I would do. Well, legally, I think we have to discuss it until they're 18. Okay. I think that's a legal, I could be wrong because, again, I come from the implant world. I was like, check your state rules. Check your yeah. state rules. But yeah. Yeah, check your state rules on that. But that's a touchy situation. That's a hard... Well, there's there's no reason to not discuss the patient's oral health. That is a requirement to the parent. If that conversation, I would say, revolves around here are some possible causes and you list two or three possible causes and then they have that discussion with their kid, that's different, I think, than saying your child told me blah, 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 blah. Oh, I like that. That's good too. Yeah. Because that's a good CYA and it's also us being preventive, informative to, because the parent has a right to know. And it, this is what I see. Here's what I know to cause this. Here's a conversation. You Help connect them with your, connect exactly. the dots and they can kind of finish the connection. And then hand them the tools and the, inf the places where they can go to get information on it. And there's a teen, um, teen NIDA, Teen National Institute of Drug Abuse, that's all for the teens. So if you're teens, you have a six, 13 and 16 year old, right? 13 and 15, this, could, this is a really cool website that they can go to and learn about and every drug on the book that's out there. And it's great information and it's cool and it's graphic and it's made for teens to go and look at. That's a good resource. Are any other resources that um, our listeners could like go and visit websites or find brochures or anything like that that you're aware of? National Institute of Health, NIH, NIH is great. NIDA is where I get a lot of my information. Substance Abuse and Mental Health Association is another website. Those are the three places that I go. And you can ask Dr. Google. You can go on. <laughs> good old Dr. Google. Yeah. Good old Dr. Google. And, you know, if you want a scare tactic, you go to YouTube <laughs> and you ask about exploding vape pens. Oh, yeah. The one that's floating around Facebook right now is uh, a CBCT of the fractured jaw. Yep. Yeah. Have you seen that one? I've seen. Yeah. Yep. Where blew his half his face off. Yep. Blew out his teeth, fractured jaw. And then you have the oral implications because of the heat burning in. And so there's lacerations back in the throat, in the larynx, soft palate. Because when that thing explodes, it's probably upon inhalation, right? Yep. And it goes in because the because of the way the battery is set. So it blows inward. It goes, pops up into your face. And so really it could be taking those kind of flames down into your Absolutely. throat, lungs, all of that. And oh. then the shards. Can you imagine the shards of the exploded pen? That hurts my throat thinking yeah. about it. It's been, you have eyes taken out before, the scarring on your face. So what's the rate of oral cancer with a vape pen? Do we know anything about that yet? No. I haven't seen those statistics yeah. yet. Because we know that for tobacco or typical cigarettes, I guess. It makes sense. It's just car it's toxin. Yep, it's new. You you can if you if you do critical thinking and you take what we know and extrapolate it out to different different forms of inhalation. If it's the same drug, it's probably going to cause the same problems. So it's going to catch up, and there's going to be an onslaught of issues. Would be my that would be my projection. So. So for people wanting to hear from you more or visit your lectures, where's a good place for them to kind of learn a little bit about you and come find you? Come find me. You can come to my website. It's www.edgibson.com. That's E-D-I-E-G-I-B-S-O-N, like the guitar, dot com. And my email is edie, E-D-I-E, at edgibson.com. So I would love to come speak to any group that will have me. I love speaking to kids. And I volunteered my speaking at church groups a lot. This message is being out n not only in our hygiene associations, but it's now I've been invited from multiple dental associations as well to have this. Good. So, nice. Yeah, it's really cool. So the docs are getting on board too. 
Good, good. So you can speak at associations, study clubs, all of all of that. So definitely um, go and check it out. And then you have implant it lectures as well. I do. Yes. I do. I have That's where we have. Yes. Car- where we have many exactly. <laughs> my buddy. Yeah, I love I do lots of implant lectures. I do. Um, I'm an educator for Strawman. So I do a lot of Strawman study clubs. I do um, some work with Seattle study clubs. So all things dental implants. And then I have my vaping and cannabis program. We talk about the um, risks and benefits of cannabis and the difference between marijuana and hemp and CBD, 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 CBC, CBD, THC, THCA, TV, blah, 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 because there's a host of things that are. And that's when I did hurt, learn about the CBD versus THC because South Carolina, it's not legal. And you said all those words. and I was like, oh, that's. Interesting. And now, like, now it's coming back, like, because CBD is in South Carolina. We yep. do the things. And I was like, I know these things now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a, I love that. And then I do um, a, a huge opiate program. I love my opiate program um, because we had a lot of guy, boys. I call them boys because they were 18 to 22 when they come to our sober living facility that started on opiates and moved to heroin. So that's where that, when I created that program, it came from my experience with my guys. And then I do a full-on um, street drug program, like your brain on drugs, the dark side of addiction. Mm. So. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for coming oh on. Gosh, thank, thank you so much, you so much for having us. me. Of course. Of so course. Fun. Well, definitely check her out. Email her with any questions. And thank you again. Thanks so much. I had a blast. Well, I learned a lot. I have not really been experiencing anybody vaping in my office it's huge where I'm at. Super huge. Oh, I bet it is. So where much that was just like day one application. But I feel like I still need more. I feel like I need to go see her, give her full course. Oh, yeah. It's it's really good. And a lot of her other courses, like um, the one on um, like marijuana and what that looks like. Like I learned because, you know, South Carolina doesn't have uh, legalized marijuana usage here. We just got CBD oil and hemp and stuff like that. But when she was talking about like THC and CBD, I was like, I don't even know what these word, these acronyms are. I have no idea what they actually mean. So it was really nice to um, kind of get introduced to them before they started to come to my state. But I mean, you've been in it. Good old Oregon, Washington. <laughs> Hold on. I've been, it's been around me, but I'm such like a, a I don't know. I'm an old man. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't, I've never been around. I don't friends that do that. So this is all still, you know, new to me as well. Well, we also want to again, thank PDT for sponsoring the CE portion of this. Um, if you haven't already gone in like to CE zoom, take a course, take a, um, I guess a test is what we're doing at the end of these. So you can get a CE credit for a lot of these and we really do appreciate the support from PDT not only financially for the admin stuff but they're just great people great humans and you should definitely check out their instruments and RDH under one roof is just around the corner so you can get some hands-on experience with some of their things and then you can meet up with Michelle and I I think we're gonna try and do another thing over at their booth and meet the people behind the instruments and other than that oh you should definitely find us on Instagram or Facebook, leave us a review on iTunes. If you're going to leave us a rating, I would love a review if it's less than a five. Tell us how we can do better for you. Tell us how we can do better for or you. Can you actually just give us a five and then email Michelle? Email Michelle us. at a tale of two hygienists and tell her why you don't like her enough to give her a five. That would be <laughs> swell, I think, for everyone. Or to send it to Andrew so he can then send me the only positive ones and I don't become a crazy person. (laughs) But you can definitely find us on iTunes. We would love for you to subscribe, like all that jazz, rate us, review us. Tell friends. Yes. And also you can send us a message at a tale of two hygienists at gmail.com or us individually, Andrew at a tale of two hygienists.com or Michelle at a tale of two hygienists.com and check us out on our website. Sign up for our newsletter that's going to be coming soon with lots of great information. You'll be able to get these promo codes, everything from Zerk. So stay tuned. Cool. That was an episode. That was. All right. All right, everyone. Have a good week. Bye, y'all. Bye.